episode 46. Guys, I did it. I looked it up before I started. I looked it up before we started. I know what episode it is. It is episode number 46. I know why my headphones aren't working. I think I have feedback protection on. Does that fix it? Doesn't fix it. My headphones just aren't working and they haven't been. All right. My headphones are still not working, but I'm just going to plow ahead. I don't know why it doesn't seem to be working. Um, I think it has something to do with, I don't know, I don't know man. I don't know. Actually, no, I think they are working. They are. I just, because I only wear one headphone, it's not working as well as it should be working. Um, anyway, guys, episode 46. Uh, this one is going to be a little different. Um, I will rant on that topic in a second. I am going to do another short one today. Oh, short-ish, I should say. I um, had to go to the doctors and it took longer than expected, as you all would be aware of, because the doctors is doctors are doctors is doctors is annoying because the doctors are annoying at, at sometimes especially when they don't yeah when they're not running to time it's not fun not fun not a lot of fun at all um anyway what's been going on what's been happening what's the haps it is friday afternoon three o'clock on friday the 17th of i almost said june July, june of june not july not june lie june lie doesn't exist 17th of June. Um, what's been happening? It's been a busy week. For me, I was, yeah, I was going to try and record yesterday, but I don't even know what happened. Ah, oh, I, rec- I, I rode for three and a half hours instead in my bedroom. Uh, would not recommend. Don't take up Iron Man unless you, when you're willing to sit in your fucking bedroom on a train up for three and a half hours. Not a lot of fun. Um, anyway, let's get into what happened so firstly my brain is zooming around as you can tell um i was gonna do the episode this week on like what my sporting background is like how i got into fitness and you know climbing through the ranks what different things i've tried out through the years and i had some pretty good it was i had enough i have enough there for it to almost be a two-parter but i just don't have time today to feel to record it or film it so we will be doing that next week um this week, like I said, is just going to be a 30-minute fucking in and out, maybe 30 minutes, I don't know. I'm just going to talk shit for a bit, um, cover off some topics that I wrote down that I want to talk about, and see where that gets us. Thumbs up, two thumbs up. Um, yeah, I think, and I might bring this into a regular occurrence, especially because I'm getting a bit busier. I might do like one week topic, one week rant, one week topic, one week rant, um, and just give myself a you know a 30 minute short sharp in and out episode um, every second week or not who knows and who knows i might get unbusy and just do this as a bonus episode each week and just call it the fucking uh rambling rambling ranthony yeah that's a good name anyway let's let's move on let's get into the juice the juice of the things um what's happened this week to me for me to me, I don't know, ignoring training, because we'll talk about that in a second, um, I got a pair of Burks, finally, I finally got a pair of Burks, after, sorry, I think I was making weird noise, yeah, after much and much and much, much patience on my behalf, I finally got a pair of Burks that are in my size, they are not leather, they are suitable for me, being a vegan, and I am fucking pumped, so I've been wearing them around the house to try and wear them in, very excited, very happy. I've been waiting to get a pair of these for fucking a long time, a very long time. Finally have them since pre-Christmas, I think. So finally got them, very happy. They fit my feet, very nice. They are very big too, um, which is cool. I don't know. I finally got them. I'm just pumped, pumped with that. Um, what else What else happened this week? I don't think I got anything else. I think that was all the, all the gifts that I got myself. Um, Found out that my car isn't going to cost as much as I thought to get it serviced, which I was fucking pumped about. I was expecting like, I don't know why, but I had it in my head that it was going to cost like $5,000. Um, it was like, it's going to cost me 500 which is way better. I don't know why I get these ex- exuberant amounts from or where I get these exuberant amounts from. I think in my head, I'm just like, all right, this is going to go wrong. This is going to go wrong. This is probably going to go wrong too. This is going to go wrong and this is going to go wrong. And if this doesn't go wrong, this is definitely going to go wrong. And I just increase the fucking cost of it to, you know, disproportionate amounts um, because I think everything's going to go wrong. When my car's fine, I drive it around all the time and there's nothing wrong with it. So I don't know. I just get in my head, I think, at times. Um, anyway, very happy with that. Um, I What happened this... Oh, so I was at the pool swimming 
as as I do, and I always sauna after I swim. Very happy with that. I love love sauntering after I swim to get the chlorine out of my skin. Um, it's a great way to you know stop not get home and be itchy and had dry due to the chlorine. You kind of sweat that shit out and you get home and you're nice and you don't smell like the pool. You smell like normal. Um, excuse me. Very happy with that. Anyway, I was in the sauna, chilling out, minding my own business. I usually do some stretching in the sauna. So I was stretching, sweating, doing the usual stuff. And this guy comes in, right? And he sits down for probably two minutes. Then he gets up and he starts walking up and down, up and down. The sauna's probably like, three or four meters long, up and down, up and down for like 10 minutes. It was giving me so much anxiety. I did not like it at all. Did not like him at all for doing it. It was stressing me the fuck out. I wanted him to stop immediately. Um, it was so annoying. I had never thought I would be so pissed off by something so little, but it just fucking shit me. I was like, stop doing that. I'm in here to relax. And you're just making me fucking stressed out. Because you're walking up and down in the sauna, you fucking dick. Oh, it was stressing me out. I was like, I, I, oh, I was so, I was fury, infuriated. Anyway, he left, thankfully. And then I stayed in for another like five minutes. And then I left to go shower, get changed before I, le- before I, I left, before I leave the gym. And I saw him leaving the shower and he had left the fucking shower on. It's not one of those automatic showers that you push the button. It was like one of the ones where you flick the handle up. He left it on. He left the fucking shower on. What a fucking dick. Oh. It makes sense as to why he was pacing now. Fucking lunatic, man. Can't be trusted. Shouldn't be allowed in the sauna. Anyway, that was one of my rants. I have another rant too lined up straight away. So I'm going to wait for that one. I don't want to go rant into rant. I have so many rants this week. It's not funny. I reckon I could rant for at least half an hour today. So buckle in, guys. If you're ready for... If you want to hear rants, I've got plenty for you. Um, I don't know why. But I do. I've got lots locked and loaded. i got a full ammo belt of rants ready to go. Um, so, I thought I was... That's right. So, I got sent. I'll actually show it. You guys can't see it if you're listening to this, obviously. But I got sent a little care package from Mingle Seasoning. And this is not sponsored. This They didn't ask me to do this. They just sent it for fun. They sent me a little, little care package with a bunch of spices and some... Um, easy cook kind of recipe stuff in it and some sauces and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, um, it's been sitting here at my desk for probably a month and a half, two months, maybe if not longer. Um, and I hadn't done anything with it and I had this great idea. I like, I was so proud of it. I was so pumped with it. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cook the meal and then I'm going to put the plate of the meal that I've cooked inside the box and lift it up and be like, Mingle seasoning is so fucking easy. Um, So I did exactly that. And then I put like, I can't remember exactly what I said, but then I like put a bunch of clips after and be like, mingle mingle seasoning literally makes it instantaneous um, to make your meal. And I was like, well, there is a few little steps, but nothing major. And then I just put a bunch of clips of me throwing a bunch of shit into a saucepan. Um, And I thought it was fucking genius. I thought I was like ahead of the curb, ahead of the curve, ahead of the curb with that one. And... Um, unfortunately it bombed on social media. It didn't do well. And I don't know whether it has something to do with Instagram being weird because it was being weird all day or if it's to do with me. I don't know. I feel like every time I post some shit, I think if I post shit that people don't like, or I don't know, is like on the edge. I don't think I posted anything that's on the edge, but if I post shit that people don't like or whatever, I feel like Instagram's like, Hey man, we're going to put you, put you out back for a bit. Um, so, yeah, it didn't do well. I was like, oh, I was convinced it was going to fucking pop off. But I'm still, I still like it. I'm still very happy with how it went. Um, genius. Anyway, on the topic of Instagram, I have been, every night, I've been trying to remove followers, people following me. Yes, I've been trying to remove at least 100 people following me. I have a bunch of people that follow me that I don't see any engagement from. I don't see their shit. They don't watch my stories. They don't like anything. They don't like, they don't do anything with me. They don't interact at all. And I'm just trying to clear up the clutter, clean up the shit. I'm like, I don't want to have that many followers sitting there inactive. I'm like, I would rather have fucking 500 people that actually give a shit than, um, you know, a few thousand people that don't give a shit. So cleaning house big time at the moment. So just dropping people off like hotcakes. It's kind of refreshing, kind of fun. Um, 
So if I accidentally, un- oh, actually, no, you guys are my podcast friends. Unless, no, unless you are my real, unless you do follow my personal page. If I accidentally drop you off and like, I'll message you about it. I'm not going to just be like, oh, let's hope they don't notice. I'll message anyone I accidentally knock off while I'm clicking through trying to get rid of a bunch of fucking random people. Um, I'll message you and explain what has happened. Uh, but yeah, been cleaning house with that big time. Um, oh cool all right so let's get into the this other rant so i was driving i have two locked and loaded right now guys two locked and loaded so this is probably a pet peeve as well yeah let's call it pet peeves so i was driving um hang on pet peeve i'm writing this because it's gonna have to go into i have a few pet peeves today so let's i'm gonna make this section pet peeves um there we go. All right. Let's, sorry. I could crop this out of the episode, but I'm just going to leave it in because, because I guess I can, guys. <laughs> Savage. Um, all right. So, I have pet peeves today because I've been in a lot of situations this week that have you know, annoyed me. Um, one of those being the guy pacing up and down inside the sauna. That was a pet peeve. That was really annoying. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Don't pace this. Don't pace up and down inside a sauna ever it's not something you should do um unless you're in there by yourself then you can do whatever you want just don't do it with other people in there anyway pet peeves for this week right while i was at the doctors i was sitting there i was there for an hour for an appointment that took five minutes really annoying by the way um so that's a pet peeve doctors running behind when your appointment is like five minutes when you have to sit there and wait for like excess excess of say two times your appointment length so if i was you know waiting for 10 minutes not a big deal but if i had to wait 15 annoyed i had to wait for an hour for a five minute appointment super bummed out i was on the point i was at the point where like if he had called someone in before me i would have just left i was not ready to sit around and wait that long um for an appointment i just wasn't ready for it not ready at all um anyway I, yeah, that's one of my pet peeves. I'm sick of waiting. I'm sick of waiting at the doctors when they're running behind. It's super annoying. And they don't know how long they're going to be either. Oh, I guess that ties into patients going to see the doctor and like having a list, having a shit list of fucking a stupid amount of things to try and sort out with the doctor. Like, you know, their appointments are only 20 minutes long. Don't go in with a shit list that's going to take you 60 minutes to get through because you fuck everyone else's day. So be considerate of others. Um, so it's not the doctor's fault. It's everyone's fault. We're all fucking letting the team down here, guys. Let's just be better. Don't be shit. Be better. Um, that leads me to my next pet peeve. This one happened to me at the doctor's. Heavy breathers. People who just breathe heavy. Like, I know it's some people can't help, but I know some people who may, be, may or may not be obese, can't help breathing heavy because it's like hard work to get air in and out of their lungs. They're like... <laughs> super annoying. Don't like it at all. There was a person sitting next to me at the doctor's that was a heavy breather and I was like, what are you fucking doing? You're breathing so heavy. It sounds like you've just climbed up fucking 30 flights of stairs and you are sitting next to me. We all had masks on. I can hear you breathing through your mask. It doesn't sound good at all. Um, so, super annoying. Heavy breathers. Pet peeve of mine. Not not, not a huge fan. Um, like, I get it. If you can't help it... Can you hear that? Weird noise. Um, if you can't help it, I- I'm sorry. It's just super annoying. It's like people who chew with them, chew food loudly. Like, some people just can't help it. They just chew loudly. It's still annoying. Like, I don't hate you, but it's still annoying to listen to. Same with heavy breathers. I don't hate you as a person. Really annoying to listen to. I hate the guy pacing up and down in the sauna because he can help that. Whereas people who breathe heavy, they can't really help it. It's just really annoying. Um, All right. Pet peeve number three. I should just call this podcast pet peeves. Pet peeve number three. All right. Now, you know some traffic light sets where... so. I don't think there are any international listen, listeners of this podcast, but in case there are, in Australia, we drive on the left side of the road, which means when you come to a traffic light, if there is an overtaking 
or left turn lane. Um, it is on the left of the road. And the normal continuation straight lane is in the middle or the, the right side of the road. And I was at a set of traffic lights that had the left lane to turn left from or continue straight. And probably 50 meters ahead, it kind of merged back into one single lane. So there was a double lane for a section before it merged back into a single lane. And I was driving behind this car that was like borderline too slow. I wasn't happy about it, was kind of annoyed. And we got to the lights and there were two people in the right lane and no one in the left lane. She decided to go in the left lane. I was going to go in the left lane to get past her, but she decided to go in the left. And I was like, oh, how considerate of this lady. She is going to go in the left lane and just let everyone go past so she can continue on driving slow. That is so, so considerate of you. How lovely. Uh, she decided to take off and overtake everyone, almost cutting off, the, like, no, cutting off the person in the front. And then she decided to drive 10 kilometers under the speed limit, maybe even more infuriating so infuriating like don't speed up to cut people off if you're gonna drive 10 fucking k's under the speed limit do the speed limit at least as a bare minimum do the speed limit or even 2 k's under the speed limit not 10 if you're gonna do 10 pull over let everyone go past and then fucking drive slow i get it if you don't feel safe but you gotta understand the speed limit's there for a reason you're not supposed to go over it but you're sure as shit not to sp supposed to sit 10 kilometers under it. I'm pretty sure you can get pulled over for that too. Pretty sure that's a fucking rule. So that pissed me off so much. I was like, what is she doing? Um, she was oblivious to it, by the way, too, which was kind of annoying as well. It's like, at least know what you're doing. Um, don't just do it because it means she's going to do it again in the future. So that was annoying. And then um, I was sitting at the lights, red hot. Like, I was just, I was red hot today. I was listening to my fucking... Um, Relentless in the Sizzle playlist Which is a bunch of like 80s rock And I was just red hot Like after that happened I was fucking ready to go And this car like in front of me Had a bunch of radio stickers on the back of their car I didn't even think they were a thing anymore Who has radio stickers And it's always the same fucking radio station too Triple R Triple R I've never heard of this radio station before I don't know what it is I've heard of Triple M I know what Fox FM is, but I've never heard of Triple R, so I'm going to Google it now, actually. I don't know what Triple R radio is. 102.7 FM, independent radio. Community radio station. I don't even know. I don't know. They didn't know they existed. I've seen all their stickers, and I've never heard any of their um, airtime. Why do people put radio station stickers on their back window? I don't get it. I mean, I can't talk because I have a bunch of Dragon Ball fucking stickers on the back of my window and a vegan frother sticker. So I like stickers on my back window, but radio station stickers? No one even listens to the radio anymore. Everyone listens to podcasts. Well, I know you guys do. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boisterous. Oh, all right. Do I have any other rants to fucking rip in while I'm, while I'm here? I don't think so. Oh, um, all right. What do we got next? Oh, one more rant to add to the list of rants um, or pet peeves. It, uh, is it a rant? I don't think it's a rant, but it's a it's an observation. What did I just do? I think I just deleted a bunch of things. No, I didn't. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a a rant as such, but it's an observation. So I was driving the other day. I always think about stuff while I'm driving or riding or do whatever. And it dawned on me. It's dawned on me before, but I really started to think about it this time. I was like, time is not real. Time is pretend. Time is completely made up. Some person decided to make up time to make it easier to organize things. And then we took time and we're like, great, this is a thing. We're going to stick to this forever. And it is the we're going to base everything. Our entire lives are going to be based off time. So we're going to go to school based off time. We're going to, you know, get married based off time. We're going to have kids based off time. We're going to fucking, you know, go on holidays. We're going to retire based off time. Time, time, time. Everything's based off time. Why do we have to base everything off time? Why can't we go by something else? You know, why do you have to fucking, why do you have to wait till like you're a certain age to buy a house or get married or fall in love or finish school or start school or, you know, get a real job or fucking be successful why do you have to be a certain age to tick all these boxes why do you have to be uh, you know fit the time requirement to get all these things 
I think time's silly. And like, I mean, I know I'm probably being extreme with this, but I'm ranting hot at the moment. So just let me go. Um, But if you think about it too, like forgetting all of that shit that I just said, time is made up. It's not real. If anything's real, it's the sun going up and down. That's about it. But time like was based off of that, really. Time didn't exist. All like time hasn't existed forever. Like back before humans became self-aware, before we evolved to the point that we became self-aware, no one kept track of time. We were just doing stuff. We were just hanging out, doing a bunch of shit. You know, every day you would just be like, I'm fucking tired. And then you'd fall asleep and then you'd wake up and be like, whoa. It's light again. Cool. And you just do shit. And you'd be like, oh, fuck, it's dark? Nice. There wasn't like, oh, it's been eight hours. It's getting dark. Or it's three o'clock. I'm hungry. It was like, oh, I'm going to do stuff today. Then you get up. You wake up and you're like, sun's up. Woo. You probably wouldn't even call it a sun. You run around, do a bunch of shit. And you're like, oh, I'm pretty hungry. You'd eat. And then you'd be like, oh, I'm tired again. Then you'd go to bed and you'd wake up. And you'd keep doing that. No, none of this sticking to a clock, sticking to a time. Time is bullshit. doesn't exist. Let's move back to, it's unrealistic, but let's move back to the the days before time, the land before time. We just got up and we're just walking around. We're just hanging out, bro. Just hanging out, doing shit. And then we would be like, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Um, In all seriousness, no. In all seriousness, though, think about time for a second. I'm going to take a deep breath too because that's the last thing I'm going to rant about. But seriously though, think about time. Think about it. It's um, it's a pretty weird, wild concept. It's like space. If you think about space, you like you get lost in thought for so long because space is so drastically big. Um, it's easy to just get buried in thought thinking about space. I do it all the time and it's just crazy. Like time is the same concept. Time is pretend. Like you think about it. The more you think about it, the more you're like, fuck, it is fake. It's not real. Like, who decided what time is? Here's another point. I'm not going to rant, but here is another point on time. Like, time isn't real. It's made up. What if, like, it's like measurements. Measurements aren't real. What if the person who invented time had a different understanding? So, the person who invented time in the US was, hang on. I know where I'm going with this, and I'm going to spit it out to make it make sense. Um, Yeah, so, time is not real. What if... The people who decided on time were as um, unagreeing or disagreeing, disagreed. What if the people who invented time disagreed as much as the people who invented measurements? And we had like metric time and analog time. Like what if they were different time scales? You know, what if an hour was fucking 70 minutes instead of 60 in America and in Australia it was 50 minutes instead of 60? What the fuck? Like... That's a possibility because time's made up. It's the same as measurements. Ridiculous. Anyway, um, I thought that would be funny if I had to spat it out properly. It probably would have been all right, but we didn't get there, did we? No, we didn't. (sighs) Anyway, let's move on to some not ranty stuff and some exciting stuff, actually. Um, So, some of you who've been following the show for a while would know that I take a sleep stack of supplements before I go to bed each night, and it is magnesium, three and eight, theanine, and apigenin. Apigenin being an extract of uh, chamomile tea. Uh, magnesium being magnesium, and theanine being theanine. Theanine. So I heard these. They got recommended by Doctor. Andrew Huberman on, Huberman on Joe Rogan's podcast to help enhance sleep and recovery um, because one of them helps, I think the theanine helps you, helps your brain stay active during sleep, which helps you like dream better and I don't know, just have a better sleep. The apigenin helps carry the magnesium through into your brain and helps like shuttle it around and help with recovery and stuff like that too. And just helps improve your your sleep. Helps increase, I think, REM sleep time, which is great for recovery. That's the recovery one. Um, So I've been taking that for so long and I've almost run out and I've needed to order more. And I don't really want to order more because I have to order a bag of the apigenin and it's sketchy as because it comes from India and it's like an extract comes in on a fucking Ziploc bag and it's brown and it looks dodgy as shit. Um, so I have to get that from India. Then I have to get the theanine from somewhere else and I have to get the fucking magnesium three and eight from somewhere else because in Australia, we don't sell magnesium three and eight for some fucking stupid reason. Anyway, 
I was about to order all of it again um, when I was like, you know what? Why don't I just check and see if I can find something on Alibaba, which is like a... Um, it's like a platform where suppliers in China advertise all their products for us, people like us to look it up and be like, cool, there's a supplier that supplies this. Great. So I jumped on Alibaba and searched it up and lo and behold, I found a supplier that actually already made the combination into a, um, into one pill or a, a tablet capsule. Um, but I wanted it to be a different blend i wanted there to be more magnesium just because their current blend was like 150 milligrams of magnesium whereas you need 200 to 400 milligrams for it to be effect as effective so long story short i found a supplier um, that will do the tablets for me um in a you know single 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 tablet or single vegan capsule um and I have decided that I will buy, um, I, they have a minimum order quantity for, like, I could have bought one, but the minimum order quantity is a thousand, but they can do a hundred for a slightly more expensive price. So I've got a hundred bottles of this um, sleep concoction, and I reckon I might start selling it, maybe. Who knows? I've got to find out what the regulatory um, rules are for supplements in Australia, but once I tick all those boxes, I will start selling it. I'll do a logo, call it something cool, and uh, start selling it. So you guys, you guys heard it here first. You'll be able to buy my the name I'm thinking about is Hyperbolic Sleep. So you'll be able to buy Hyperbolic Sleep from me, straight off the press. I'll give you guys all exclusive discounts too. Everyone else will be be, be paying a sucker price, whereas you guys won't be. You'll be paying the good price. Um, but yeah, I I've checked out. I made sure the supplier, they had like all their, their tests and stuff like that, um, showing that their product was good, clean, not pretend, not bullshit. Um, they're a trusted supplier. They've supplied things to Australia or to people in Australia for a long time. Um, they've been in business many years, which is a big sign, a big thing to look at. So I'm very excited with that. I just got to find out what I have to put on the label to make it, make sure it's satisfactory and if I've got to pass any tests here in Australia. But, you know, stay tuned, guys. You heard it here first. Here, here first. Maybe I needed a drink. You heard it here first. We are, or I, am bringing a sleep supplement to you guys and to me too. It's probably selfish reasons because I really wanted one all in one tablet. Um, so that's very exciting. And I've also... Uh, officially ordered samples for t-shirts that I am going to bring over as well to try and, you know, I want to get a t-shirt, a t-shirt line going for fans of the podcast. Um, so I'm getting some samples done. I want to find someone, I want to basically build a relationship with someone so that like I can just do whatever with them. Like it's going to be easy process, like spend the time setting up, building that relationship so that when I want some, you know, when I want something done, it's like, cool, I can go to them. They're going to work with me and we will get it sorted. So I have some t-shirt samples on the way. I just got to figure out sizing. I want to make sure they fit good because I want them to look nice, but I also want them to train in as well. So got to find a good balance. Um, but yeah, very excited for that too. So that's another exciting thing that's coming up. Just got to come up with some cool slogans, cool logos, cool stuff to put on these t-shirts. I actually had an idea that I think is pretty cool. Um, I want to do like, see this one that I'm wearing? You won't be able to see it, but it's the San Antonio Spurs one. I don't follow basketball. Um, so I thought of doing like the same kind of vintage style with the vintage kind of washed out colors, same kind of cool logos, but with team names that aren't real. Like the, um, oh, what's a, let's, let's, let's think. Let's go Melbourne, Melbourne Mantles or the Melbourne Manta Rays, something stupid. Maybe that is actually a team. Just come up with teams that don't exist, teams that aren't real. Um, Hobart Hermione's, something like that, and do them on a TV, uh, a TV, on a T-shirt, and make the logo look cool and make it look like an NBA logo. But it's not really an NBA logo. It's just a pretend team for people that don't really follow the NBA but like the way that the T-shirts and stuff look. You heard it here first. I should trade trademark that shit. Trademark that shit, boy. Um, all right, let's move into my training for the week. Um, I'm gonna, I'll try and keep this quick. 
although I feel like some of you guys like listening to what I do for training at the moment. So let's, I don't really touch on what I do over a week of training um, ever because, you know, I just, I, I don't want to like, I don't know, I feel like I do a lot and I don't want people to try and do the same amount as me, but I feel like some people are interested. So my weekly dose of training is about 18 hours-ish. I will do three swims that will get me to about uh, 10 or 11, 10, no, 10 to 12 Ks a week in the pool. Um, I will do runs. I'll run about 50 kilometers a week. I'll usually do three runs, three or four runs, um, depending on how much riding I'm doing. I will do three or four rides. So either two or three trainer sets during the week and then a long ride on the weekend. So I'll always do a long ride on the weekend and a long run on the weekend unless I'm doing heavy ride volume. And if I'm doing heavy ride volume, that means I will only be doing, I won't do a super long run on the weekend. It'll be two rides, if that makes any sense at all. Hello, Hudson. My dog's outside my window. Yeah, so I'll do probably anywhere from far out, anywhere from five, no, anywhere from six to 10 hours of riding a week, anywhere from 50 Ks, I don't even know, let's say four, three or four hours of running, no, let's go three to five hours of running a week, um, and then in terms of strength, I will do three strength sessions a week as well, and then a, a Metcon session that I've been doing lately, so a lot of stuff that I got to fit in, so I'll train twice a day, every day, basically, unless it's the weekend, in which case I'll just do a long fucking ride, or a long run that'll take me a couple of hours. So that's generally what I do this week. Um, in terms of this week specifically, how did training go? Well, my try training is going fantastic. I feel like I'm absolutely fucking crushing it. It is great. I feel so fish. I, I feel so fit. I feel like a fish in the water. Running feels like it's legit easier than walking at the moment. I honestly think my heart rate would be lower running than it is walking. Um, I feel that good while running. Especially easy running. Oh, easy running is easy. Riding is still the hardest of the three, but I think that is completely normal because if you think about it, swimming, you can only push yourself so hard before you can't breathe because you it's all down to breath work um, and like lung capacity and stuff like that. Running is super high impact, so you don't want to be pushing running too hard, especially if you want, want to be in the long term, want to be able to do it in the long term. Riding is really the only thing that you can kind of go hard and come back to the next day and keep kind of doing. Um, so I think that's why riding's hardest because it's like I, have, I can do fucking, you know, multiple hard sessions throughout the week because I can keep recovering enough for it. So I think that's why, geez, uh, riding is the hardest. Oh, man. Um, speaking of my, my training days being doubles, I have had actually, I've had some big days in the last, this last week. Tuesday, I did strength, hit a swim, did 3.8Ks, and I had a 90-minute trainer set in the afternoon, which was a big day. And then I rolled into Wednesday, which was another swim, a trail run, and I did the Metcon at Monty. So it was like, and that was at 12.30. And I had finished, I did all that before um, one o'clock. Thursday was strength and a three and a half hour ride set. That was yesterday. Rough, dude, rough. Um, the trail run was fucking awesome. I ran from home out the back of like Kangaroo Ground, um, Panton Hill and St. Andrews. Bunch of trails, all mountain bike trails back there. Fantastic for running. Loved it. Had so much fun. I did like 500 and something meters of elevation and ran pretty quick too. So it was like, it was good fun. It was really good fun. No one was out there. The weather actually held off and it was quite the joy to run around out there. Um, Metcon was so much fun. Ben and I spoke after we did it and it was like, I think like we fit the bill with that one. It was um, super hard like it was hard but it was also super fun so it was it was a co good combination of both like sometimes they can be just fucking rough and it's so rough that it's not fun whereas this one was just fun and difficult at the same time it was fantastic um in terms of my three and a half hour ride that i did yesterday oh let me tell you about that one eh it was so difficult so I decided to pick a course on Zwift that would give me a ridiculous amount of elevation because it was like, I just don't want to be doing this. I want something that's going to make it easy to try and work hard. And although it did make it easier to work hard, it was also hard. 
um, because I picked a, a track that had like this one climb that was like 1200 or 1300 meters. <laughs> Oh, I bless you. Thank you. Yeah, it was like 1,200 meters or something in one climb. So I sat there for, I think it ended up taking me like 90 minutes to climb this one fucking hill. And it sucked. I was trying to do like efforts up the hill and then cruise on the flat and the downs. But that hill was so long that I ended up just fucking burning out. Um, so it was it was a rough day at the office. Three and a half hours is a long time to just be sitting in your room. I'd much rather go for a three and a half hour ride outside. Um, but we got it done. We did it so that today I didn't have to do it. And you know what? I feel better for it. I got it out of the way. I'm very happy. My butt's a bit sore from sitting on the fucking the seat, but you know what? We live, we live, we move on, we keep growing, we become stronger. Um, so that's try training at the moment. Feeling fucking awesome. Um, like I really am feeling fucking awesome in terms of that stuff. Strength stuff. I was worried about this week. I mean, week four of my program, I was really worried because last week the weights seemed kind of heavy. Um, I was worried I wasn't going to actually make it through this week. Um, because like I said, they seemed heavy last week. I was like, I got to go up. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I've hit all the lifts. Um, nothing didn't fail anything like my deadlifting, was a bit of a grind as well as my car squats kind of bench was a bit of a grind squats were kind of a grind um but oh my gosh (laughs) yeah it was you know i did it i ticked them all off so i'm very happy with that the overhead press felt super awesome super explosive um i think it's the first time i've ever been able to press pain free and actually felt strong in the overhead press after learning how to press properly from strong first um usually i just fucking can't do it i do a couple of reps and i'm like my shoulder feels like it's gonna snap so learning how to press properly has been a fucking game changer and it feels great to be able to just press so explosively um for each rep the deadlifts felt were feeling good i was up to what was my program up to so i started like a hundred and 15 or something i'm now at 137.5 kilos for five reps five sets so the first few sets were great i think the first three sets felt pretty good um, i'm really trying to wedge properly and put all the stuff i learned at strong first into action which is difficult when it's under a lot of load like i can move that weight pretty well um, if i go back to my old technique but my old technique isn't going to get me the top end strength gains that i want so i've got to try and drill this new technique called wedging um and if you haven't if you haven't heard that term before think of it like putting a doorstop under the door what happens to the doorstop you put a doorstop under the door what happens to the door the door starts to lift that's the concept of wedging so you're kind of wedging yourself under the bar so the bar starts to lift before you actually have to do anything um so i'm trying to learn that under load it's a bit difficult but we got there it wasn't it didn't turn to it didn't turn to shit completely but the last two reps of the last two sets were a bit hard um so i think we might be getting to the top of that the top of the deadlift program we might have to reset soon uh in terms of the bench press it was a little slow today but it was moving well like um better than last week last week i struggled a bit this week felt fucking great i think i was getting myself into a stronger position this week which is the best i could really feel it like i was really bracing properly i was really getting my chest nice and tall making sure i had extension through that upper spine locked in with the lats um really trying to drive up drive that bar up and it was it was feeling really good so i was very very happy very pleased with that and then squats bit of a grind in the last two sets um again i think it was just the last rep of the last two sets which was a bit of a grind but the rest were pretty good felt really good dropping down i was worried with the weight it was up to 97.5, um, but did it pretty well. So I'm very happy with how they're moving. Everything seems to be progressing at a good rate. So I'm happy with that. Feeling good, feeling strong, feeling sturdy. Um, able to actually like, I had a bit of a sore back today because of the ride yesterday. But because my technique is sound at the moment and I'm not lifting shit, my back was fine. Even though like I was putting 97 kilos on my back and squatting it, Having a sore back, my back was great because I'm doing everything right in terms of technique. So I'm very, very happy with um, how that's progressing too. I'm making sure I'm keeping it tight. High and tight, boys. High and tight, true. Um, 
The I did have a swim today or this afternoon, um, but I decided to give it a miss. I didn't actually have it. It was an optional swim. Like I was going to do an extra set, an extra session, swim session today because I'd only done two this week. Um, it wasn't on the program, but I was just going to do it anyway because, you know, love the swim. Uh, but I just, especially after the doctors, that like pissed me off so much. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go for a swim. I'm not going to, I don't need to. It's not on the program. I've trained, I've already put in, um, well, I'm going to do 18 hours this week. I've put in fucking 16 hours already of training, which is how many days have we gone through? I'm going to take a day off tomorrow. Um, we've done five days. What's 16 divided by five? It's just over three hours a day. So I, um, you know, I was like, I don't need to do another session. I would rather sit down and record a podcast for you guys than squeeze in an extra session I don't really need to do. So here we are. Um, and I'm glad I did this. It felt good. I apologize if today was super ranty, um, but I like ranting. Sometimes it's fun. So I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I might um, do a the odd rant podcast where it's like less than an hour of me just absolutely going off at stuff that's happened during the week. Because it's fun, dude. I love it. I like ranting about shit. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's enough. I think I'm going to wrap it up. So stay tuned, guys. I've got... Uh, I'm very excited to see what happens with this sleep supplement because it, regardless of whether it actually fucking fits a bill for anyone else, at least it fucking works for me. And if any of you guys like want some, hit me up and I'll give it to you. Um, I'm not sketchy at all trust me i will make sure it ticks all the boxes i'm not gonna like i take it myself so i wouldn't be um i wouldn't be pushing something that i wouldn't take myself um i've made sure everything ticks all the boxes like i've made sure they've got a glass bottle with a metal lid because i'm all about sustainability i don't want none of that fucking plastic shit even though the plastic would have cost me way less to do i was like no give me glass give me metal i don't want any of that fucking plastic shit um but yeah, it ticks all the boxes, so I'm very excited for that too. Um, just got to come up with a name. I think hyperbolic sleep's cool because it sounds sick. I was going to do hyperbaric sleep because hyperbaric chamber is good for recovery, but I think hyperbolic just sounds fucking sick. Like uh, in Dragon Ball, the hyperbolic chamber, hyperbolic time chamber is a, cha- a chamber they go in where it, like an hour is like a year. Yeah, an hour, one hour in the hyperbolic time chamber on the outside is an hour in the chamber. So that's what it's like. You get a year's worth of recovery with one hour's worth of sleep. Hyperbolic, hyperbolic sleep. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a fucking awesome week. Um, I will check into check in on you guys next week. Hopefully, I have a bit more time and I can actually put together a um, podcast with the topic. The topic I want to do next week is my sporting background and what I've come from and how well, like what I've, where I've come because I. Like not a lot of you probably know this, but I started off as a pretty obese, chi- a pretty obese kid. I was overweight, did not like to exercise at all, hated it. Um, was the bane of my existence, and now it's like my fucking life. I love it. So I will touch on that next week. Otherwise, guys, have a fucking ripper week. I will chat to you in a week's time. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Um, yeah, stay stay classy. Mm-hmm.